Amo ka bayo bay ba? May sakit. Ano naman sa iyo to? Babu bayo ka ba bay? Sige, search na to. Hello, Hello mga kabetmates! So for today's video, we are going to talk about the unsoundness and blemishes of, of the horse. horse. So our video includes the unsoundness and blemishes of the horse's neck, skin, body, horse feet, front leg, hind leg, and stable vices. At the end of this video, we hope you guys that you will be able to differentiate and learn the soundness, vices, blemishes, and unsoundness in horse. Soundness is the overall health of the animal. It is the horse's freedom from lameness. The horse's suitability for a particular purpose such as eventing, jumping, polo cross, hack, and dressage competition. Next is the unsoundness. Unsoundness is any condition that interferes with the horse's function and performance. A horse may be termed unsound when it suffers from any disease, natural disability, or accident circulate. Some horses become unsound at an early age because of coarse, crooked legs, whereas others remain useful for years. As with automobiles, abusive treatment, excessive use, and poor care will render any horse unsound. A horse suffering from any of the defects may necessarily diminish its usefulness, although in some cases, the defects may be a symptom of unsoundness and potential unsoundness. While the vices include biting, bucking, Crib biting, kicking, roaring, running away, shying, being vicious, weaving, and stall walking. Now let's talk about the unsoundness and blemishes of the horse's neck, body, and skin. The primary function of neck is to maintain balance in locomotion since it comprises 10% of the horse's body weight, while the horse's torso along with the back part protect all the important organs. The skin provides a protective barrier against the environment, regulates the temperature, and gives your horse its sense of touch. Depending on the species and age, the skin may be 12 to 24% of an animal's body weight. It is important to know the blemishes and unsoundness of these parts for us to know its cause and act upon it. Now, let us proceed to the neck. Your neck is a faulty conformation trait. It is a thin neck with concave arch occurring as a defect in dogs and horses. It is caused by strong out movement with head thrown upwards. It has an upside down neck. The top line is concave rather than arch. The head usually forms a right angle to the neck at the throat instead of a curved arch. The symptoms are stiff or unwilling to be soft in the bend of their body and neck, or may have difficulty with performing certain movements. They may pull against the reins or start tossing their head. Horses with you neck just need regular opportunities to work out the muscles of the top of their neck. Crusty neck. It is thickened by excess fat deposits. It increases the weight carried on four legs. It may be an indication of laminitis. The unusual growth lines may be its symptoms. In addressing underlying metabolic issues, increasing exercising and feeding a lower calorie diet will help support weight loss and help get rid of horse's crusty neck. The unsoundness and blemishes of the horse's body. First is the heaves. It is a common, performance-limiting allergic respiratory disease of horses. It is observed when horses are stabled, bedded on straw, and fed hay. The average age of onset is 9 years of age. Approximately 12% of mature horses have some degree of allergen-induced lower airway disease. And over 50% of horses that are present for evaluation of respiratory disease are diagnosed with heaves. Horses with classic heaves have flared nostrils and difficulty in breathing. The symptoms are persistent chronic cough, nasal discharge, and respiratory difficulty. Some horses with heaves can live a long life and still be used for pleasure, trail riding, or even competition. The mainstay for medical treatment of heaves is the administration of anti-inflammatory medicines such as 
corticosteroids, and bronchodilators. Roaring. It is a condition in horses that greatly reduces their airflow during exercise. It is the damage or breakdown of the laryngeal nerve that causes roaring. The term laryngeal hemiplegia means paralysis of the half of the larynx. Paralysis in the larynx reduces the amount of oxygen a horse can inhale during work. Roaring is more common in race horses and other performance horses. The symptoms are roar or the whistling noise heard during exercise, low and decreasing tolerance for exercise, and the difficulty in breathing during or after exercise, usually in larynx. The common method to treat roaring in horses is a prosthetic laryngoplasty, also called as tieback surgery. Rupture A gastric rupture is caused by a loss of tissue integrity due to severe gastric ulceration and perforation, localized infraction or marked distension of the stomach wall. This usually occurs in cases of small intestinal or stomach obstruction or overfilling. Its symptom is a severe abdominal pain, also known as colic. The horse initially feels better because the pressure of an overfilled stomach will no longer cause pain, but it will soon show muscle tremors, rapid weak pulse, fast shallow breathing, and the dropping of body temperature. A ruptured stomach is almost always followed by death within few hours. Next is the sway back, which is also called as equine lordosis. It is characterized by a large dip in the spine of the horse, often resulting in a high wither and severe downward curve to their top line. It is caused by a loss of muscle tone in both the back and abdominal muscles, plus a weakening and stretching of the ligaments. It is more common in older horses and brood mares who have carried multiple large babies. The U-shape of the spine is its symptom. Unfortunately, sway back cannot be reversed, but there are things that you can do to help strengthen your horse's back for overall body and ease of movement. Carrot stretches are a great way to get your horse stronger throughout his body. Hip down. It is the fracture of the prominence of the hip and falling away. The ligaments or joint membranes are ruptured due to trauma. When dislocation thus occur, fracture of the hip bone or locking of the kneecap in an extended position often accompanies it. The symptoms are lameness of the hind leg, abnormal swaying of the hips, and discomfort upon rising and reluctance to run or jump. Treatment involves rest, and steroids injected into the joint may relieve the lameness temporarily in milder cases. Anti-inflammatory drugs are useful, but many horses are in too much pain for the drug to have beneficial effects. Pastern Dermatitis Pastern Dermatitis is an inflammatory condition of the skin involving the lower limbs, particularly non-pigmented skin. These are some of the most common conditions affecting horses. The symptoms are patchy red skin or erythema, oozing, crusting, erosions, and ulcerations develop followed by swelling or edema of the affected limbs. The skin can be itchy and sensitive. Lameness is observed in some cases and can become severe. Clinical signs most commonly occur in both of the hind limbs, but one, three, or all four limbs may be affected in some cases. How is pastern dermatitis treated? Treatment of pastern dermatitis depends on the underlying cause. Antibiotic therapy accompanied by clipping and mildly cleansing the affected area with topical corticosteroid application if no improvement after one week is accepted initially. Thrush. This is another outgrowth of bacteria and fungi. This time in and around the frog of the hoop. Thrush leads to bad odor and changes in the frog but rarely lameness. Symptoms are discharge from the crevice of the hoof, obvious sensitivity of the hoof or leg, very foul odor coming from within the hoof, frequent easy bleeding of the hoof or leg, and other signs of pain and discomfort in your horse including restlessness 
or loss of appetite. How can thrush be prevented? Prevention is better than cure, and thrush can be avoided by good stall management and regular foot care and inspection. Stable your horse in clean, dry conditions and have your horse's feet regularly trimmed and shod to avoid the development of long heel conformation and to keep the frog healthy. How is thrush treated? The horse should be moved to a dry, clean environment. The foot should be thoroughly cleaned out, removing necrotic debris from within the affected frog sulcus and then pared out down to healthy tissue, allowing air to reach any remaining damaged tissues. The frog and its sulcus should be scrubbed daily with dilute iodine solution. Rain rot. Secondary to a damp coat, whether that is from the rain or being left damp under a blanket after sweating or being given a bath, Bacteria and fungus multiply to cause skin irritation. The symptoms are crusty scabs that peel off with clumps of hair and leave bare spots on skin, probably contracted rain rot. How do you treat rain rot? Horses are treated using topical antibacterial shampoos that contain thoraxidine, povidone iodine, or benzoyl peroxide. The horse should be lathered up, the shampoo left to soak for 10 minutes, and then rinsed. Any loose scabs should be gently removed. Any adherent crust can be treated with a povidone iodine ointment to help soften them for later removal. Cellulitis. A very small wound or other opening in the skin, including from scratches or pastern dermatitis, can allow bacteria to get into tissue under the skin. Once under the skin, the bacteria spreads and causes extensive swelling and edema. If left untreated, this inf infection can spread to the lymph nodes and a horse can become systemically ill. These are the symptoms. The swelling will be significant, hot, and often painful. A leg affected by cellulitis can have a stovepipe appearance, and the skin also might crack or develop an abscess. And lastly, quite often, the horse will also have a fever. Treatment involves reducing inflammation, controlling the infection, and preventing further Infection. Your veterinarian might ultrasound the leg to look for foreign bodies or fluid pockets. Your horse should receive non-steroidal anti-inflammatories such as phenylbutazone or flunixine meglumine. In the case of a noticeable wound, fluid pocket or drainage, your veterinarian might also collect a culture or use a gram strain to choose the appropriate antibiotic, though this is not always possible. Dermatophytosis Ringworm or dermatophytosis is one of the most common skin diseases that affects horses. Despite its name, ringworm is actually a fungus found in soil. It causes loss of hair in very characteristic circles. This disease can be spread to humans. These are the symptoms. Hairless, flaking or crusting lesions which may be itchy. Occasionally raised non-itchy nodules may be seen. The most common sites to see lesions are areas of skin prone to minor damage such as in the girth area or in the face and, and under the saddle. Clinical signs often start as a papular eruption followed by crusts, alopecia, and erythema. Ringworm infections usually clear up without treatment. Treatment with medicated shampoos can speed up recovery in some cases. Such treatments are not always effective. However, your veterinarian can provide you with information about any treatment that may be appropriate for your horse and advise you 
regarding precautions you should take to avoid ringworm infection in yourself and members of your family. Seborrheic Dermatitis This form of dermatitis is characterized by a greasy hair coat and flaking. It can have a combination of underlying causes including allergies and bacterial or fungal. The symptoms are flaky or scaly skin, scaling especially near main base, skin is dry or flaky, skin is laughing off, and multiple sores, crusts, or scabs on skin. So treatment requires management of the underlying cause and usually also includes some treatments of the flakiness. In some cases, it is very difficult to know the underlying cause. In those cases, seborrhea is treated symptomatically with anti shampoos and nutritional supplementation. anti shampoos usually contain sulfur, coal tar, and salicylic acid. Moving on in the next category, viral. First is papillomatosis or warts. Equine viral papillomatosis is a very common problem in horses that leads to equine warts, which often appear as small lumps on the skin, particularly around the horse's muzzle. The warts are caused by papilloma viruses, which means the virus enters the skin cells directly, causing the lesions. The virus causes warts to appear primarily on the noses of young horses whose immune systems are not as strong as adult horses. The symptoms are Small, multiple pink or gray pedunculated lesions on muzzle, head, and ears. How do you treat papilloma in horses? The warts can simply be surgically removed. This treatment is usually more of an attempt to improve cosmetic appearance of a horse in show competition. Immunostimulants, topical ointments, and autoimmunization have all been used as treatment for warts. Oral plaques, another papilloma virus-induced condition in horses. Oral plaques are raised papules that form on the inside of the ear. The symptoms are small, white cauliflower-like warts or white flakes, pink thickened skin under the lesions, can affect one or both ears, and head shaking or sudden head shyness. There have been several treatments tried with variable clinical responses, but no definitive treatment is available. Clipping the hair, removing the scabs, and applying an ointment with a steroid in it may help decrease the size of the lesion and relieve the pain, but likely will not completely cure the area. Next category, atopic or allergic. Number 1. Hives Urticaria or hives is a common skin condition in which well-defined raised areas such as lumps, wheels, or rings occur in the superficial dermis, an upper layer of the skin. Mostly these areas are quite small but in severe cases, whole areas such as the face or one or more of the limbs may become swollen. Just like people, Horses can have allergy reactions to things in the environment including pollens, detergents, or chemicals on riding equipment, or even components of their own sweat. Hives are not always associated with itchiness but can be bothersome. Symptoms are The typical case of urticaria presents as a series of raised swelling or bumps, usually over the head and neck but the whole body may be affected. This can range in size from only millimeters up to several inches in diameter. In many cases, donut-shaped rings will be seen. How do you get rid of hives on a horse? For acute cases, which can be seen within 24 hours of development of first signs, a single injection of short-acting corticosteroids will usually remove skin lumps and resolve any itchiness. In some cases, no further problems occur but in others, the condition recurs. Eosinophilic granulomas 
Eosinophilic granuloma is the most common inflammatory nodular skin disease of the horse. These are small nodules that typically form along the horse's back and are made up of collections of allergy-driven immune cells. They are often seen as a response to a sensitivity to detergents or chemicals in saddle pads or other riding gear. The symptoms are pain, swelling, tenderness in the area, headaches, increased thirst and increased need to pee, also known as diabetes insipidus, stiffness if the growth is on or near a joint, and discoloration on the skin above or near the growth. Treatment for eosinophilic granuloma depends on several factors and usually includes a combination of surgery, chemotherapy, radiation therapy, and corticosteroids. However, for some patients, close observation alone may be the appropriate course of the action. Feet are the foundation of horse's body, so maintaining a healthy you will, is the best way to give your horse a long, healthy life. Horses that work most of their life may acquire one or more unselfishness of the feet to varying degree as they get older. Side bones. This is a common unsoundness resulting from wear, injury, or abuse. They are commonly termed as lateral cartilages. When they ossify, they are called side bones. The horse is then considered hard at heels. And the side bones are more common to the front outside lateral cartilages than to other locations. Symptoms of side bones. Pockets of calcification felt when palpitated, limping or stilted walk, unwilling to walk, constant shifting of feet, and resting on leg more than the others. Treatments. Fit a flat, wide web shoe with a rolled toe wide at the quarters and heels and extending beyond the ground surface at the heels to support the heel and encourage expansion. Ring bone. Ring bones are not very common but are serious unsoundnesses. These bony deposits usually appear just above the coronary band or the hoof head on a hind foot, although front feet also may be affected. The long and short pastern bones may fuse together, causing severe pain and lameness. Symptoms of ring bone Lameness Treatment Pain relief is front and center when treating horses with ring bone, and non-steroidal anti-inflammatories are often provided in the, as a first line of defense. Founder or laminitis It is an inflammation of the sensitive laminae which attach the hoof to the fleshy portion of the foot. Its cause is probably an allergy, and most common in holder horses. Ponies, Morgans, and draft breeds are at especially high risk, but the condition can be seen in any breed. All feet may be affected, but front feet usually suffer the most. Permanent damage usually can be reduced or eliminated by immediate attention by a competent veterinarian. Symptoms of founder in horses Acute Sudden lameness at the walk Increased heat in the hoof wall Increased digital pulses And hoof tester sensitivity over the toe of the horse Chronic Rings of the hoof wall Widening of the white line And sinking or flattening of the sole Treatments Various medicines can be given to control the pain including non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as penilbutazone or flunixin and opiates like morphine and pethidine. Navicular disease is an inflammation of navicular bone and bursa. The condition causes lingering lameness. Structure associated with navicular syndrome includes excessively long toes, underrun heels, and a broken back of hoof pastern axis. It is more common in mature riding horses between age of 8 and 10 years old and is associated more commonly with certain breeds such as warm bloods, quarter horse, and thoroughbreds. Symptom of navicular disease in horses Lameness Treatment Non-surgical treatment of navicular syndrome consists of rest, hoof balance, and corrective trimming or shoeing, and medical therapy. Corns 
appear as reddish spots in the sole, usually on the inside of the front feet near the bars. Advanced cases may ulcerate and cause severe lameness. Bruises, improper chewing, and contracted feet are the most common causes. Response to correct treatment and chewing is usually satisfactory. Treatment Dorsia shoes should be removed as a first step. Dry and moist corns are paired with a hoof knife to relieve pressure, and superating corns are opened to drain and treated as for the pus in the foot. Next on soundness in the foot of the horse is the hoof cracks. Hoof cracks is a very common hoof problem in horses and can occur in a variety of ways. The most common cause is a change in ground conditions, usually from very wet, moody conditions to a dry environment. Horses' hooves can also crack under pressure from some sort of trauma, and the forces that cause the crack sometimes originate within the hoof itself. When hoof cracks extend upward to or near the hairline, lameness often results. When well established, the condition is difficult to arrest and cure. However, it can be prevented by proper trimming and chewing before it becomes serious. If the crack is deep, it is important to keep it clean and medicate the cleaned area to avoid any infections. Sometimes, a crack may be caused by an external trauma. A serious blow to the hoof can cause injury or, if it is severe enough, it may crack the hoof. Crack can also be the result of repetitive behavior such as kicking, um, kicking at hard ground or walls, or galloping regularly in rough terrain. Genetics also play a role in the strength and thickness of a horse hoof walls. So, as much as horses are selected by breeders for performance, appearance, or other attributes, genes are very important. So, here are the symptoms of hoof crack in horses. First is the fluid or post discharge. Next is the lameness, pain when touch, and swollen or discolored coronary band. Always remember that if hoof cracks become severe, it not only can be painful and impacts on horse performance, but it can also lead to an infection that could potentially be deadly. So, no matter how minor the hoof crack may appear to the horse, it is important to provide proper care and treatment for the crack. Contracted feet Contracted feet are a result of continued improper chewing, prolonged lameness or excessive dryness, where the heels lose their ability to contract and expand when the horse is in motion. Horses which are kept shoe, those with long feet and those with narrow heels are susceptible to the conditions. Contracted heels are characterized by a narrowing of the heel between the two bulbs, the soft fleshy area where the hoof walls, heel, and coronary band come together. And when this happens, it is important to provide the proper hoof support in order to manage the conditions, improve hoof health, and avoid lameness. There are different causes and symptoms that can be identified before contracted heels occur. Some causes include predisposition to sore heels and lack of hoof maintenance. Predisposition to sore heels is if a horse predisposed to sore heels. For example, due to its conformation, it can develop contracted heels if its hoofs are not maintained on a regular basis. And lack of hoof maintenance if horse hooves are not maintained properly. A horse can develop contracted heels. For example, heels that are not long can cause the frog to disengage with the ground and can eventually lead to heels to contract inward. So if a horse develops contracted heels, it can take 8 months to a year of extra maintenance in order to get the hooves back to a healthy state. So, it is important to maintain a regular trimming schedule about every 6 weeks to avoid conditions like contracted heels and it is also beneficial to the horse overall health. Even when you feel like you're doing everything right for your horse and his hygiene, there's always the possibility that he will come down with a case of trash or a fungal infections on his skin. 
These conditions are quite common in horses and even in those with pristine living conditions. Thrush is a filth disease enhanced by decomposition of stable manure around the bars and frog of the foot, and it may cause lameness. It responds to cleanliness and treatment is usually prompt and complete. Unlike ringworm and other similar fungal infections, thrush occurs on the horse hoofs most of the time. It is also technically a fungal infection as well, but is caused specifically by yeast, according to Candida albicans. Thrush usually starts deep within the hoofs and spreads to other parts of the hoof over time. Thrush infections are caused by exposure to fungus and to moist environments. When horses are kept in these conditions and are unable to walk or run for a length of time, their hooves cannot be naturally cleaned the way they should and may be more prone to developing this condition. The symptoms of thrush in horses include discharge from the crevice of the hoof, obvious sensitivity of the hoof or leg, very foul odor coming from within the hoof, frequent easy bleeding of the hoof or leg, and other signs of pain and discomfort in your horse, including restlessness or loss of appetite. These conditions are very treatable, especially if they cut early and shouldn't cause any significant lasting problems. Last is the pastern dermatitis, more commonly known as greasy heel or mud fever, or scratches in the USA. It is an inflammatory condition of the skin involving the lower limbs, and it is a very common annoyance for horses. Scratches or grease heel are characterized by inflammation and scab formation on the back surfaces of the feet locks. In its early stages, greasy heel is not painful but may cause some discomfort to the horse. However, if the lesions are not treated and allowed to progress, they may become painful or itchy and lead to scratching, further to trauma and lameness. It is actually a disease complex that can be triggered by different causes. Early, accurate diagnosis and appropriate treatment result in the most successful outcomes. And prevention of pastern dermatitis generally lies on avoiding exposure of the area to recurrent moisture and or sources of contagious organisms such as mites and ringworm. Symptoms vary depending on the severity of the reactions. The most common symptoms is swelling, erythema, and scaling, which may lead to the hair becoming matted. Over time, Particularly in chronic cases, the thickening of the skin may occur, leading to reduced movement, lameness, and pain. Symptoms that, that may be seen are painful cracked skin, thick, purulent discharge, fatigue, and loss of appetite, and the affected areas become scabby and crusty, and sometimes oozing clear or yellowish serum. Preventing this condition is understanding the underlying risk factor. Most cases are characterized by disruption to the healthy skin barrier, excessive exposure to moisture, and opportunistic infections. Pointing Pointing refers to a state of rest with one foot positioned about 10 to 12 inches ahead of the other. If the horse is standing with one hoof forward, this is called pointing. Lameness in the foot or leg will cause pointing. So horses that demonstrate pointing indicate that they have hoof problems or a lameness problem for their abda leg. It is an effort to reduce weight on the affected side. Since the front leg bear about 60% of the weight of the horse, they tend to point one front limb forward when they experience pain in the rear part of the limb, especially in the hoof. Healthy horses stand at rest with weight equally distributed on both front legs, wherein weight is shifted habitually from one hind limb to the other by healthy horses during rest and does not indicate lameness. Splints are bony deposits that appear on the upper inside border of the front canon, a hard bony swelling that appears on the inside of the horse's lower leg. Splints can seldom cause lameness, but occasionally a high splint may interfere with the action of the knee and cause unsoundness. Splints usually occur in horses 2 to 5 years old. 
Although they can occur at any age, they are common in younger horses in training. Young horses stressed by a play or training may blow a splint. So lameness due to splints is most common in two-year-old horses undergoing training. Cause They are caused by damage to the splint bones or the ligament between the splint and the cannon bone. A ligament located between the cannon bone and the splint bone is quite elastic in young horses. As the horse ages, the ligament ossifies. That is, the ligament is replaced by a bone in the three bone fuse. During ossification, there may be inflammation and pain. Jumping, running, and working a horse during this time produces further irritation. Signs If you probe up and down along the cannon bone, the horse will flinch when the portion of the ligament undergoing ossification is touched. A large swelling or a number of smaller swellings due to ossification may occur along the length of the splint bones. If lameness persists more than a few days, a veterinarian should treat splints. The third one is the wind puffs or the road puffs. It is the puffiness around the horse's ankle. Small swellings around the ankles and lower canons are common to horses that are used heavily or trailered a lot or to older animals. Those with adequate flat bone, well-defined joints and prominent veins usually have sufficient substance and circulation to withstand wear better than the horses with coarse, round bone and meaty legs with poorly defined joints and veins. These puffs are the blemishes found on horse, and it is caused by the age, concussion of the joints, and also through genetics. This can be diagnosed by the veterinarian through observing its appearance, lameness, pain when the fetlock joint is flexed, and local heat. The fourth one is the cup elbow known as shoe boil. It is a blemish at the point of the elbow. It is usually caused by injury from the shoe when the front leg is folded under the body while the horse is lying down most often caused from repeatedly putting too much pressure on the horse's forelimb. In addition, shoes with calves or heels cause more damage than plates. The symptoms of the cup elbow is a horse with large movable swelling at the point of elbow. Last but not the least is the bowed tendons. These are the apparent by a thickening of the back surface of the leg immediately above the fetlock. One or more tendons and ligaments may be affected. But those commonly involved are the superflexor tendon, deep flexor tendon, and suspensory ligament of one or both front legs. This is caused by injury or chronic stress and commonly happen to race horses, polo ponies, and horse jumpers. The symptoms of the bowed tendons are walking abnormally, swelling, lameness, and pain in the area. Predisposing causes are severe strain, wear and tear with age, and relatively small tendons attached to light round bone. Bowed tendons usually cause a severe unsoundness. Bowed tendons in horses is a condition in which the tendons become torn or damaged, and then heal in a way that makes them curve outward like a bow. This greatly affects the horse's ability to walk and function in a normal and pain-free manner. Soundness and blemishes of the hind legs The hock is the most vulnerable, hence the most important joint of the body. All of the power of a pulling horse is generated in the hindquarters and transmitted to the collar by contact with the ground via the hocks. Therefore, the horse should be free from induced unsoundness and blemishes. Bone or Jack Spavin Common unsoundness of light horses, especially those with sickle hocks or shallow hock joints from top to bottom surmounting fine round bone. It is a bone enlargement at the base and inside back border of the hock may be a bone spavin. Bone spavins, like ring bones, may fuse bones and render joints inarticulate. Its symptoms are dragging of hind legs, hind limb stiffness, poor performance, progressive hind limb lameness, refusal to jump, uneven hoof wear, and unusual stride. The type of treatment depends on the severity of the disease and the anticipated future use of the horse. 
Limits on activity, adequate rest, and the use of ice packs may reduce acute mild inflammation and swelling. For more severe established cases of bone spavin, analgesics, anti-inflammatory medications, exercise management, and even surgery may be required. Bog spavin are soft swellings on the inside front area of the hocks that may result from the presence of synovial fluid. It is more common to heavy horses than the light ones. Its symptoms are swelling of the hock, heat in the hock, and pain in the hock. The treatment of most bog spavins heal on their own, and the horse is left with a small painless swelling. If the joint stays inflamed and the swelling is hard and tense, arthritis may develop in the joint, causing lameness. In which case, anti-inflammatory injections will help with the swelling and a veterinarian may prescribe corticosteroids in combination with other treatments to improve cartilage health and reduce substances that de degrade the cartilage. Thoropin. These are blemishes that appear as soft swelling above and back of the hock joint, just in front of the large tendon. They can be pressed from side to side. Symptoms This swelling can be moved around across the hollow above the hock. It is very soft and mobile. It is usually on one leg but can affect both if it is skeletal deformity. A soft lump will be noticed around the hock area, and the lump can vary in size. Given the nature of the swelling, treatment is usually not necessary. Some veterinarians may recommend draining the fluid, but this is done mostly for cosmetic reasons. Curbs Can be seen best from a side view. They appear as swellings on the back border of the base of the hock, and they result from inflammation and thickening of the sheath of one of the important tendons. Symptoms are lameness, pain demonstrated by various behaviors, visual observation of swelling of the plantar ligament, visual observation of enlarged or denser tissues noted at the site of or around the plantar ligament. Since the same type of swelling that occurs with curb can also be caused by other soft tissues injuries, the above symptoms may vary from severe to non-existent depending on the tissue involved. Treatment as with other sprains, treatment of curb begins with adequate rest of the affected limb. Ice packs should be applied for up to 30 minutes, 3 or 4 times a day, and the limb should be wrapped between treatments to reduce swelling. Then after 2 days of treatment, alternative temperature therapy along with oral and topical anti-inflammatory drugs to reduce pain and swelling are usually prescribed. Some veterinarians may inject hyaluronic acid around the ligament. Cup hock. It is a common blemish which is a thickening of the skin or large callus at the point of the hock. Many cupped hocks result from bumping the hocks when trailering in short trailers or with unpadded tailgates. The symptoms of cupped hocks are swelling over point of hock and there is no lameness. Usually, no treatment is required for cupped hock particularly if your horse is not lame and if there is no wound. In cases where treatment is advised for cosmetic reasons, there is no uniformly successful treatment and many cases are not responsive to any form of treatment. String halt or crumpiness of the hind legs. It is a disease of the nervous system resulting in spasmodic flexion of one or both hocks when the horse is first moved after standing or when caused to buck. It occurs more frequently in older animals and may not render the animal unserviceable. The symptoms of a string halt are hyperflexion of one or both of the hind limbs, especially at the walk, and hoof lifted sharply to the belly and forcefully stamped on the ground. There is no definitive treatment for string halt. Some horses may recover spontaneously. In cases of plant poisoning or intoxication, horses should be removed from areas containing the toxic plant. Vitamin E and thiamine are the most commonly recommended vitamins for the management of string. Stifled. 
When the patella of the stifle joint is displaced, the animal is stifled. If the patella is displaced outward, severe lameness results. If it is displaced inward, lameness is less serious and sudden movement may replace it. The symptoms of stifled are dragging the toe, counter resistance, difficulty backing up, shortened stride, issues going up and down hills, drifting to one side over fences, and problems transitioning from trot to counter and vice versa. In many cases, a general improvement in fitness and muscle tone of the hindquarters can eliminate the problem. In the more severe cases, surgery to realign the kneecap may be recommended. Following surgery, rest must be sufficient to permit complete healing 4 to 6 weeks before resuming any training. Cock ankles Cock ankles may appear in front but are more common in hind legs. Advanced cases impair movement and decrease usefulness. The symptoms of cock ankles are impaired movements and excessively flexed fetlock. Cock ankles standing bent forward on the fetlocks, usually hind fetlocks, can be helped or corrected by lowering the heels. Cock ankles will not occur if foals are allowed to get ample exercise and are not overfed. It is also important to keep the foals heels trimmed. Often known as table bias, it is the stereotypical behavior in horse. The horse often develops table bias to cope with an inappropriate environment. Good day everyone. Today we'll discuss to you about the stable vices of the horse. It is that the stereotypical activities in the horses are repetitious and appear to serve no purpose and are more generally referred to as steady vices or stable vices. Stable biases are rarely the result of a single reason, instead they are typically a combination of variables, the majority of which are management related, but genetic and health issues might also put horses at risk for developing st certain stereotypes. Steady biases or stable biases fall into two broad categories, the oral and the locomotor. The horse typically develops stable vices to deal with an unsuitable environment. Locomotor stereotypes are frequently linked to inadequate socialization, low turnout, and other physical limitations. The most plausible connection between oral stereotypes and foraging resentment. Example of specific vices. First, wind sucking. The horse's behaviors of wind sucking involves pulling back its throat, bending its neck, and occasionally sucking air out loud. The horse may be do this while standing erect, or alternatively, it may put its top incisors over the edge of a feed dish or other fixed object before inhaling. Next, Cribbing. Cribbing, also known as wind sucking, is the act of a horse grabbing something with its teeth, arching its neck, and sucking air in. Colic may result from this, which is bad for the teeth. Both boredom and anxiety can lead to cribbing. Weaving. The act of weaving, which is categorized as stable bites in horses, involves the animal repeatedly swaying on its four legs and changing its weight from side to side by swinging its head and neck. The remainder of the body may also swing and the front legs may be raised. Next one is stall walking. Stall walking is a continuous circling or pattern tracing, pattern tracing of the stall. In its stall, the horse walks about or in circles. This might be a symptom of a stomach pain or another anxiety related symptom. Kicking. Horses who purposely kick at their handlers are acting cruelly or fearfully. And this behavior needs to be rectified right away. A handler to the side of the horse may be caught by a 
cow kick, which is a kick that moves both forward and sideways. Although it is bothersome habit, kicking stall walls or trailer ga gates increases the risk of leg, leg trauma, costly facility damage, and harm to the legs. Many cape hawks and curls were caused by pointless kicking. Biting. It is a risky vice since a horse's strong jaws can seriously hurt a handler. Stallions are especially likely to bite, thus caution should always be used. Tail rubbing. Although being viewed as a vice, tail stroking might indicate a fungus, lice, or worm. Your horse may be stroking his tail for a number of reasons, including boredom, stall confinement, and habit formation that can be difficult to break. Boredom is just a small factor for tail rubbing in horses. Some horses just appear to want to brush their rump along a fence or a hay rack, although it can be full under the same category as behavioral problems. And lastly, halter pulling. Halter pulling is a vice that typically arises from inadequate or subpar tying instruction when one is young, a horse that refuses a tie is a nuisance and occasionally hazardous since some horses can never be trained to break their habit of pulling back when tied. Wait, wait, wait! May lang kahit nalang itong video ba? Kabalo na ko sa sakit akong kabayo. Nice! May nalang na ipinoy bet akads. Like and subscribe! <laughs>